Hi, this video is going to demonstrate the firmware update process on a DataLogic Memo 1, Memo 10 and Memo 20 mobile computer using our scan to deploy studio configuration software. First thing we're going to do is browse to the DataLogic developer page, the URL is here, developer.datalogic.com and we're going to download the latest scan to deploy studio using this executable here. Once downloaded and installed, you'll open it up and find this screen here. Now, at this stage, we're ready to create our firmware update QR code. For us to be able to scan that, we need to be at the Hi There screen on the device itself. Now, brand new out of the box devices that have been just been switched on, will already be at that screen. If you've been playing around with it or you're not at that screen, you can get to it by going to Settings, System, Advanced, Reset Options, and we're going to do a factory reset. When that's completed, we will be at the high there screen. So while that's taking place, we'll start creating our deployment code. So we're going to click on Create, Firmware Actions, we're going to include a Wi-Fi setup as the device is factory reset. There's no network settings on it. Select our model, our type, and the current Android version. We'll then go into our Wi-Fi setup, and we want to connect this to the same network that you're currently running the Scan to Deploy Studio on. Next, we need a firmware file. So at this stage, we're going to go back to the DataLogic developer page. And this time we're going into products. We're going to find our Memo 10 firmware. And these are all our firmware releases for this device. The newest version is at the top. And if we open that up, you'll see a few different options. We've got EMEA GMS, we've got US GMS, and you'll need to choose the right firmware for your device. Um, most likely the most common device is the EMEA GPS, uh, GMS. Rather. So you've got full and incremental update options here. You can use the incremental update which is a much smaller file if you're coming from the previous firmware version. So you can see in the file name here it advises 204, the previous version. If you're not on that version or you're not sure, it's best to go with the full version. So to download, we're going to click on this padlock here, and it's going to ask for the serial number of your device. This is under the back battery cover of the device, and you will need a ease of care contract or a DataLogic Shield license to gain access to this firmware. There is a three month grace period after purchase, so if you've had the device less than three months, you will be able to download this firmware free. I'm going to enter my serial number in here now and then download the file. When that's completed, we'll be able to point our scan to deploy code to that file and proceed to the next step. So let's add that downloaded file to our setup. It's the latest version here. And as it's a factory reset device, we don't need to do any resetting afterwards. It'll take a few seconds just to validate that the file is complete and it's now adding it to our install package. We can now move on to save and print. Final step, we need to give the profile a name and decide where we want to host it. So if we host it on the scan to deploy studio option, it, uh, the program itself creates a web server on the same network as the device and it allows it to pull down from your computer. You can also host the file somewhere else allowing for remote updates without needing the scan to deploy studio program open. For now we're going to stick to the local option. So when we save our profile it's going to create a tar file, tar archive file, and it's this file that is actually going to be transferred to the device and run.
So we don't need that file, but this is what you would save to your remote server if you choose to go down that route at a later date. So we now have our scan to deploy code. We can now scan the code with our device. And you will see on the screen, we're now being asked to allow scan to deploy access to the device and to be the device owner. So if we approve that, the scan to deploy agent on the device is now opened. It's configuring the network based on our Wi-Fi setup. You can see the device has been assigned an IP address of 129. It can see my computer, the local server of 127, and it's now downloading that .tar file containing our firmware update. This process will take a couple of minutes, obviously depending on your network speed. So once the firmware file has been downloaded to the device, we will unpack the archive. And again, this takes a few minutes before we reset the device to do the update itself. And again, you should allow three or four minutes for this. When this process completes, you'll be back at your home screen. should get a notification telling you that the firmware update has been successful. Okay. And that's the process complete. Now, on some very old firmware versions, uh, if you are coming from an old version, it's possible that there is a mismatch between the scan to deploy studio program that you have in your computer and the agent that's on the device itself on that particular firmware version. In those cases, there's a requirement to update the scan to deploy agent on the device first. So I'm going to demonstrate that with a memo one that I have here. It's on an old firmware version with an old incompatible and this time, when I scan that code, I get an error message telling me that it can't set up the device. So the next few steps are going to detail how to get around this and get the device onto the latest firmware. So back to our data logic developer page. We're going into tools and we're going to use the Android Enterprise QR generator. And this tool is going to update our scan to deploy. Choose scan to deploy here. Over the air again. So this is location of our latest APK. And the last thing we'll need to do is configure the Wi-Fi network because again it's a factory reset device and it's going to need to communicate with our server. So this is entirely separate to scan to deploy, but we will use the scan to deploy afterwards to deliver the firmware once the agent is on a matching version. I'm going to skip the encryption of the device and I'm going to leave the generation code unencrypted to ensure maximum compatibility with any firmware. Once I generate that code, Again, I'm going to scan with my device and 
this time you'll see a familiar screen asking for permission. It's going to deploy to become the device owner. This process again takes a couple of minutes. Okay, and when that process is complete. find the scan to deploy agent has opened and you are now ready once again to scan your scan to deploy code to update the firmware on the device.